All right, so which jetter to buy? Let's say you're gonna do residential only. Well, there are machines like this that they come with a 10 gallon a minute pump. And then 10 gallon a minute will, 10 gallons a minute will candle most uh, four inch pipes, which is um, here in my state, they usually, the four inch pipes, and they are normally approximately 100 feet. Uh, that's I say about the normal house that we deal with here and the 10 gallon machines at 3,000 pounds will uh, take care of most most of the jobs I believe it's called the or urban soldier the one that's 10 gallons a minute uh, on this uh, of, of this machine uh, the type of this machine is 10 gallons a minute and that most company that's what res most residential companies carry now if you were somebody for example like us that does commercial and residential and you occasionally can come to a I don't know a six inch pipe or maybe a, a five and a half inch clay a long distance and it's full of grease and things like that where you need more water more volume to move stuff out of the line uh, you're probably gonna need something like this 20 gallons a minute maybe higher uh, to be able to do the job right because I always say my motto is Pressure uh, clears the pipe, volume cleans the pipe. So the more water out of more jets you have at the end of your hose will help you clean pipes faster and better in my opinion. That said, let's say you are a commercial and a, and a residential guy, you do both things. All right, well, here's my take on this. If I buy the urban soldier which is a 10 gallon a minute machine the small machine will not be able to do what the big machine does but the big machine which is this will be able to do what the small machine does for example i can make this jetter push 10 gallons a minute at 3000 psi if i wanted to using my own loader valve now let me explain what this is. This basically controls the amount of gallons the pump, the, the, the pump will be sending to the house. So right now we have it set up uh, uh, and then we have a nozzle here. Should probably wear gloves, but. All right, back, we have our gloves on. Where's this nozzle? Okay, me. And here I have two nozzles right here, okay? So this is a 19 gallon I made a nozzle. And this is an also I found somewhere back there, probably from my general card jetter I used to a couple of years ago. Uh, but this is clearly, I'll say this about nine. You can tell by the size of the orifices how small they are and how many they are versus these. So what I'm gonna demonstrate today is how I can turn this machine, and how I can use this nozzle using this machine, and I can also use this nozzle uh, uh, to use this machine as well. So let me explain. This is the unloader valve. It's on all the jetters. Uh, some jetting manufacturers don't even give you this handle because you know, oh, they say, okay, we, if you buy a 10 gallon a minute machine, you run 10 gallons and that's it. They don't want you to be screwing around here with the unloader and, 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 and maybe uh, raise the pressure uh, somewhere else and blow something up. So they, sometimes they don't even give you this handle. This company does. And basically what I do here is obviously the more gallons you send down your hose, the more pressure you will build. So all I have to do is basically this. I take my hose. Let's say I'm doing a three inch pipe and I don't want to use, okay and I don't want to use, this is the mold nozzle by the way. If you don't have one of these, go buy it, they're, they're the best. Okay, so 
let's say I'm doing a small pipe. It's a three inch. I don't, I don't, and then let's say I'm in the basement. I don't want a lot of water to be sending down the pipe. It may turn into a mess. I want to do 10 gallons a minute at 3,000 pounds. So I just go ahead and put this nozzle in, right? So the, what, what, the reason why I'm explaining this now is because once the machine is running, you may not be able to hear me. So I wanna, I wanna make sure that you understand everything. So what I will do basically is I'm just gonna send no gallons. I'll open these all the way. And then basically I'm not gonna be sending any water to any, not a lot of gallons to the pump. So no water, no pressure, obviously. So what I will do basically is I will just turn the machine on, turn the pump on, and water will start coming out of this nozzle right here with no pressure. As I increase the gallons per minute by twisting this, you will see that my pressure will start to rise because I am sending 10 gallons a minute and this is only allowing nine out of the, uh, out of the nozzle. So what happens is that once this gets to the proper uh, pressure, let me show you. <clears throat> so once this gets to the proper pressure right here, let's say is uh, I want it at a thousand. So I'll just keep twisting this until this goes to a thousand pounds. And then that's about it. Uh, I'm running 10 gallons a minute. And uh, at, at a thousand pounds, and by by me increasing this, the pressure will rise. And I use this in conjunction with the engine. The more the engine reps, the more gallons I send, the more pressure I will have. So this is how how you got to. This is how you play with that. The machine is completely not designed to do that. But if you if you want to do it in one occasion, you can. So, however, if if you buy the 10 gallon a minute machine, you cannot get it to 19 or 20. It will stay, the, pu the pump will push what it pushes and that's it. So it's pretty uh, basic. Uh, the only thing I want you to be careful is, <clears throat> for example, if you have this particular machine, uh, the throttle, when you are working inside a basement or, or let's say you, you're not close to the machine, you cannot tell how much pressure you have. And it's also impossible. I'd say it's not impossible, but it's sort of also very difficult to get the exact amount. Let's say I have a nozzle right here that's pushing 10 gallons. For you to get exactly 10 gallons by twisting this knob, this knob right here, it's, and also, revving the engine at, at the exact RPM, it's very, very difficult to do. So what happens is that if you go over the 10 gallons a minute, and let's say the nozzle is pushing nine and you're sending 10, what happens is you're gonna create overhead pressure. Uh, the overhead pressure is basically, let's say for example, the pump is here, the end of the hose is here, the pump is gonna be sending 10, this is only allowing nine. So it's gonna send one gallon back and then the pump is now gonna send it again to the nozzle. It's gonna be sending two and then three and then four. And then you will see if you don't have somebody or come outside and check out well, uh, how the machine is performing, you will see the pressure start creeping up. It's called overhead. So that's one of the things you should be careful uh, when you set this machine to Let's say you want to do less gallons per minute. Uh, <clears throat> so that's that's one of the things I, I want you to watch. So be very, very careful. So yeah, basically you can, I can literally put a quarter inch hose with a, with a five gallon a minute uh, nozzle at the end. And uh, I can run this machine and do a kitchen sink and then go to the next job and do an eight inch pipe. So, and it's just, it, it gives you a lot more options when you have more power, more water. Because you can always reduce it, so. And believe it or not, most people finance these things, obviously, I do. And the difference in the finance is gonna be probably 50 to 20 bucks. So, totally worth it. Get the bigger machine. And that way you won't regret later.
Man, these hoes have seen better days. Ouch. of the engine brought me to about 900. Another one uh, starting to creep up a little bit but I don't want to get the engine uh, I don't want to give it more juice I don't want to give the engine more gas so I'm just going to use my own loader. takes in your truck uh, having uh, your jetter your jetter inside so. so as you know this is strictly drain cleaning truck and I believe this machine takes about 60 inches from the from uh, before the bumper I'll say from the metal uh, where the uh, where the door latches to the back, you'll take about 60 inches. And that's basically what this van carries right here. Small shaft back, camera, locator, K50 cones, uh, 300, you know, basically all the stuff to do, to, that has to do with drain cleaner. So if you don't do drain cleaning, if you do other stuff, you kind of lose all your real estate here. You can't really, I mean, you, you can, but you know, you, you have to start putting things on top of that and then that's how you damage stuff, so. I uh, just wanted to show you that. So basically, if you're a plumber and you need to pick up a boiler, you just, you're just you gonna have a hard time doing this, so. Here's what it look in the Sprinter. Now you have a lot more room here. Uh, and, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, again, it, it does take a lot of your, uh, of your truck, so. Uh, but when it comes to drain cleaning, equipment, equipment, equipment. You need equipment. You need to have stuff. You need to have small hoses. You need to have big hoses. You need to have small nozzles, big nozzles. You, you need to have everything. You need, you need things like this. Like if you, when the traps are too deep and you have to get the hose to go, uh, to go out to the city, uh, this is, this is this all a bunch of crap. You need it. Inquiries about videos you want to see, 
I hope uh, I hope the uh, that my subscribers have uh, the answers that they were looking for. So until next time, uh, stay drain cleaning and have a good time.